These are the talismans we were promised. Yes, and I made a quick count. There are far more than we could have hoped for. Enough to outfit an entire company of soldiers, in fact. Considering the involved process, that they were able to manufacture so many in such a short span of time is nothing short of a miracle. Once we have distributed them to our allies in Eorzea and the Far East, we'll have a fighting chance to bring down the other spires, just as we did with the Tower of Zot. Or we could use them to invade Garlemald proper and strike directly at the Teloperoi's base of operations. Of course, we would need to consult with various Alliance leaders before such a drastic measure could even be contemplated. To which end, I could set out forthwith and present the idea to each of our allies in person. Pray allow me to undertake some few of those journeys. I find myself restless and in need of purposeful duties. I can head eastward. Bosnia and Dalmasca are just a short hop from here. And Doma's Shinobi network should come in handy for passing on the word. We shall share the burden then. Meanwhile, I think it best that you and the others take the talismans back to the Baldessian Annex. We must keep them safe and secure until we've decided upon a course of action. Please, I must speak with you. Nidana, you're awake. Yes. When I spoke with the carer at my bedside, she told me that one of the scions, a young woman, had cleansed me of the tower's corruption. It seems I'd been asleep ever since the treatment. But when I awoke and learned you were all still here, I knew I had to come. As you said, Nidana was captured only recently. Such a brief exposure is swiftly cured, so I tended to her before we gathered at Megaduta. And I am truly grateful that you did. I cannot thank you enough. For all of you, for everything you've done. Destroying the tower, rescuing our people. You saved Havnir from an awful fate. Yet who hath truly saved whom? Due in no small part to thine inspirational courage, the alchemists were successful in reproducing warding scales of proven efficacy. Replications of thy work now stand ready to travel across the seas unto the hands of those who might wield them against this rising evil. A talisman? Is this true? Oh, I was so groggy from sleep. I didn't even think to ask. Oh, our great work sent across the seas. It was worth it. Oh, it was all worth it. Look at that. Its color is completely changed. What do you have there? How unusual. I wonder if the effect is a reaction to Akasha. 
I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that term. Akasha? It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feeling. You imply that it is distinct from ether. Our foreign scholars often conflate the two, but we see them as separate concepts. Ether is an energy which permeates the land. It exists within animals, objects, even the air we breathe, affecting all through which it flows. Akasha, on the other hand, exists in a domain beyond our reach a gift bestowed from on high or torn from the heavens in some traditions akasha can neither be created nor destroyed it is beyond our power to purposefully alter or manipulate the only thing observed to influence it is an abundance of i want to say spiritual emotion As a veteran of the battlefield, surely you've experienced moments of desperation or exaltation when you've transcended the usual limits of your capability. That is a manifestation of Akasha, the invisible essence harnessed by heart, mind, and unyielding spirit. I really must hear more about this theory. Our disciplines are based entirely upon the idea that ether is the fundamental form of all energy. I'm glad my haphazard explanation has piqued your interest. But even for us, Akasha is a somewhat abstract field of study. A lack of practical application lends itself poorly to formalized research. Which is why my analysis of your flower can amount to little more than idle speculation. I am sorry. Nonsense! You have nothing to be sorry for. Your insight is much appreciated. Shall we depart for Charlian then? I will see to it that the talismans arrive at the Annex. And we will be in touch once our talks are concluded. I suggest you rest while you can. From here onward, sleep is bound to be in short supply.
Take heart and protect them well. You're here. You haven't eaten yet, have you? We've bought quite a spread if you're interested. Only the finest dining from the last stand. Lest you wonder, we invited Astinian as well. But he refused with a rather grim-faced, No, thank you. I suspect Charlian cuisine is not to his liking. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Perhaps our lone wolf just needed some time apart. What? To perfect his brooding stare? Next time, I'll drag him out by the ear, sit him down in front of a Charlian feast, and see that he eats every last bite. An excellent idea. Of all people, warriors must take proper meals and rest, if they are to maintain a healthy constitution. Poor Astinian, beset on all sides. Speaking of one's physical condition, Mistress Quile, I hear you've recently played literal host to Heidelin herself. Ah, and what an experience that was. Tiring, yes, but no lasting harm done. If anything, I should have liked to speak with her longer. I've not felt a hint of her presence since. Heidelin instructed you to carry that flower, yes? Twill be your guide, test and proof of your conviction. And then something about seeking joy in darkness, was it? Come to think of it, isn't that what happened with Nidana back in Radzat Han? Hmm. The flower did seem to radiate a joyful glow, as if reflecting the elation we all felt, the relief of a people with renewed hope. Indeed, and in turn, I felt buoyed by that radiance. It was akin to spotting a beacon and knowing we were on the right path. I know we've not yet triumphed over the Tlophoroi, or learned the full breadth of the Forum's plans. But even within the midst of our struggles, we find small moments of joy to sustain us. Rare and hard won, perhaps, but it is this pursuit of happiness that gives us the strength to carry on day after day. mine to the swift the spoils though i recall that levitation spell of yours was quick enough mm, only barely and even at my best i'm still too slow to wield it effectively in battle mayhap i simply require more practice with this new magic you unearthed it from the depths of numenon i presume i and from a veritable mountain of arcane tomes at that. It was necessary to facilitate my solitary explorations. 
Or, to put it simply, you used it to sneak around the Forbidden Archives. I... Uh, yes. Well, after a fashion. The shelves, they're too tall for me. And I could hardly move the library's platforms without attracting attention now, could I? Oh. oh. I'm not that ambitious, but it is pleasant to idle away the hours every once in a while. Enjoying the bracing cold, I see. Do you not own a warm coat or a cloak? Something in fur? Or fashioned from the skins of your enemies? Or... Well, never mind that. I come to you once more as the bearer of bad news. Our tower in Thavnir has been toppled. And I need not tell you by whom. Given how many we have at our disposal, the loss of a single spire is hardly fatal to our plans. It does, however, slow the rate at which we siphon the ether. If they continue to preoccupy themselves with the towers, then all will be well. But should our foe prove bold enough to strike at us here, then the timing becomes... Question. Our foe is bold enough. Of that, I can assure you. Ah, uh, yes. Very well, then. I suppose I must... Pr Honestly, talk of your nemesis is the only thing you seem to enjoy. Does nothing else spark your interest? Hmm. No. All else is... equal. Equally tedious. Equally disappointing. The world is a tepid bog into which we sink, too weak to thrash as the mud clings to our eyes and fills our throats till we blissfully choke. But then came the light, blinding and pure and hot, so very hot, enough to set my soul aflame. I basked in the afterglow, until the void yawned once more. And then I knew the muck would never claim me again. There was naught for me ahead, so I drew the curtain on all that had come before. Burn. Burn. The 
the whole star burn. I will have my contest. I will reclaim my moment. How wonderful that the emptiness of death has not dissuaded you from committing your life to its pursuit once more. I don't know whether to envy you or pity you. You question my disinterest, but what of yours? Despite your noisome antics, I sense you take little pleasure in this endeavor. Mercy, my lord. Such pointed barbs from one who barely acknowledges my existence. Nevertheless, you are mistaken, for I do find this part somewhat enjoyable. You see, when I was mortal, I would always have the same dream. It was a fragmented thing, disjointed, all the faces incomplete. The setting, too, was unknown to me, so I thought it simply a fantasy of my sleeping mind. Until one day, I realized it was showing me the truth. Much as your dream of the final days enlightened you. And soon, very soon, the rest of the world will see the truth of my dream, too. Yes, I think that is something we can both enjoy.